Hello, Akron fans! This is Shadow 33 with another exhibition match stream. It's gonna be a couple of replays from this last week. First off, we're gonna have Cybernetic Pony and Mon Cookie on Felsic Inferno. It was also Felsic Inferno a couple weeks ago, and yes, I realized this debug thing here. I still don't know what's causing that. I kinda wish I did, so I could just go in and get rid of it, because that would be pretty easy to do if I knew what it was, but I haven't really had time to debug this game in a while. Anyway, Cybernetic Pony starting out in the southwest side of the map, while Mon Cookie starting in the southeast, Cybernetic Pony going for Grekim, Mon Cookie going for Vekir most likely. We'll see. Yes, he is of course going for Vekir because he's Mon Cookie, and Mon Cookie always goes for Vekir. This is no exception. So yeah, Mon Cookie going for Vekir, and at this point we can't really tell what the players are doing right now. They're going from an economic and a more aggressive strategy, but Mon Cookie is definitely deciding, while Cybernetic Pony has already decided. Looks like he's going for more of an economic start. Moving his Articus over to Scout, which, classic move. Very common, you see Grekin players will move their Articus over, just because it's 1,000 health that can fly and basically scout everything out. And they don't need it for command at the early stages of the game, though this is a bit of an aggressive move. The more defensive move would be to keep the Articus at home, so that when enemy scouts come in, the Articus just tanks everything and basically distracts the targeting systems. That is not what Cybernetic Pony is doing. He is confident that he will be able to survive any early attacks Mon Cookie throws at him, and given that he is going for a quick Octopod, he got the Q Plasma right away, and is likely to build the Octopod once he gets the Liquid Crystal, which will be within about 15 seconds, then he will build the Octopod right away. And there it is. So, he's quite confident that he can fend off any early attacks, which he can. Definitely can with the Octopod. Now, Mon Cookie, on the other hand, he is going for... well... His standard, which is quick rush with the early infantry. See what damage you can do, set, a, set down foundation. This will probably be echoed, but it will be interesting because Mongui doesn't always echo this out. Sometimes he will keep going. Sometimes he just he just pushes forward and doesn't care. Just attacks and attacks and sometimes wins the game. We'll see though. He is attacking a minute into the future, so he's probably gonna echo this out. Summoning so pony down, 219 mark. Does have his Octopod in here, which will provoke the echoing. No doubt will provoke Mon Cookie to echo this out once he sees that there is an Octopod that is killing him, or that will be killing him. Though in this particular iteration, ahead of Cybernetic Pony, the Q Plasma was not gone for, so Mon Cookie doesn't know about the Octopod yet. He's he knows. Okay, now he knows about it. Jumping back to the 221 mark, right at the present, he does see the Octopod and is going to be echoing this out right now. Pausing, echoing. Gonna move these guys back and setting up his RPs. Setting up an economic opening, most likely. Because Cybernetic Pony, like I said, he had enough to defend with the Autobod. So, very clever there. I mean, he knows what he can do. Cybernetic Pony is a very good player, so of course you know what he can do. Anyway, Mon Cookie getting up, like I said, economic start, getting his Zion Veer here. I think he might be afraid of a counterattack. We'll see, though. Cybernetic Pony could very well send an Autobot and a couple Octos over as a counterattack. He does have quite a few set piece, which to me, it looks like Reef. Likely to build a couple Reefs, and then from there get pretty quick air attack. That there's the first Reef, and the second Reef will be built right there. So, Twin Reef. I've noticed that recently Bubble Wrap is not a thing, as opposed to before where you get three Reefs. Now most players will just get two, which I... Bit of a debatable strategy. I mean, a lot of... There has been some discussion about what the optimal number of Reefs is, but players need to be going for two nowadays rather than three, which... I'm not sure I totally agree with, but I guess if you're not worried about in-base combat, it's not a big deal. I say that because the healing is very expensive. It costs 15 energy per heal, and I can't remember how much health it actually heals per shot. I think 20 or so. <laughs> Which means that they're not going to heal a whole lot for 250 energy. It's, it's a, one reason you'd have more than one, more than two reefs, but I guess Cybernetic Pony's not expecting in-base combat. And with the amount of Octos he's building, he's not turning them into anything... I think he's going to go for an aggressive strategy right now. At the 5 minute mark, he appears to be building up for an attack, while Mon Cookie, on the other hand, he is back at the 205 mark, setting up economy, setting up a few more RPs, going in with the scouts once again, but probably not, he's not sneaking with it. Keeping his scouts back to figure out what is going on. Best place to have them right now, although I think he should probably build a comm hub and walk away. I mean, that I have mentioned before how much I very much like the comm hub, so of course I would say that. But yeah, if he builds a comm hub and just leaves that there, puts it off to the side, it'll be cloaked. I mean, you'll know what's going on, and Cybernetic Pony wouldn't. Although, because Cybernetic Pony has moved away his Articus, so he wouldn't be able to detect it easily. However, Cybernetic Pony 
If he is going for a counterattack, he has to do so pretty quickly. Monkuki is preparing, getting an early foundation, and probably getting an early depot. Cybernetic Pony does see with the Arcticus what is going on, though, and jumping back to the 209 mark, where Arcticus has not yet arrived. In fact, he's going to, interestingly, move it to the center of the map. Not going in for the scout with that. Instead, it looks like he's going to be expanding right here in the center, using the Arcticus to build the Faro and Sepi pair. We'll see, but that seems quite likely. Now, that means that Cybernetic Pony does actually see what's going on. He does jump forward to double check when his Arcticus is in Monkuki's base, sees the second foundation, and is probably going to assume it's a depot early on. Now, Monkuki, what is he? he is going for a depot, as usual. That's a pretty typical thing to do. So, going for the depot, going for enough Q Plasma. He's probably going to go for Zion Turchers rather than Zion Pulsers, which against Grekum, against the, the Octopods especially, that is not surprising at all. If he does so. We'll see, though. He might go for Zion Pulses regardless. Enough Zion Pulses will overwhelm the Octopods, so we'll see. Anyway, Cybernetic Pony is back at the 327 mark. This is right when Monkuki is as well. Summary Pony just jumped back half a minute, but right before his re actually, wow, he's okay. Summary Pony apparently just double checking everything, probably setting up for his edge attack, trying to figure out when it is best to attack. I'm a bit surprised that he'd be going for an edge attack from his base directly. I don't think that's what's happening. You wouldn't normally go edge attack from your base. You do it near your opponent's base, like you'd set up around here-ish, and then wait until the edge comes in, like wait until you get right near the unplayable past edge, and then you'd attack. Just to minimize the amount of time your opponent has to respond, minimize the amount of propagation that'll happen. But we'll see what happens. Cybernetic Pony is at the present at the 617 mark, while Monkuki is back at the basically three minute, well, 336 mark. Cybernetic Pony has just jumped back to that. We'll switch over to Monkuki's point of view. Monkuki does have a Zion Turcher, as expected, getting Skip Teleport and getting a Zion Pulser as well. Very likely he's just going to cloak the Zion Turcher. Not going to use the tank. Very few players use the Zion Turcher to tank, although 300 health is substantial, but. No, most players will cloak it. Mind you, against Grekum, it's not that big of a deal. With the Arcticus is near, well, the Faro nearby. Where's the Faro? The Faro nearby, that will detect, although in progen mode, it's not very useful. Faros do not have a very high sight range in progen mode. It's, it's basically this. Their sight range is, they're half blind. Now, Cybernetic Pony getting a lot of Octobots and Octos. He is definitely going for a heavy assault now. While Monkuyi does actually see the Arcticus, of course, that is symmetric, or, yeah, well, symmetric, that is reciprocal. Cybernetic Pony doesn't know about the Zion Turcher hopping in. Doesn't matter if it's cloaked or not, Arcticus is due to detect cloaked, and they are, the Zion Turcher is attacking as an edge attack, hitting one of the Octopods, and there is nothing here to detect quickly. A Faro is likely to come up. We are at Cybernetic Pony's point of view, and Faro is being built. Two Parafaros are being built, moving down south, and with the reefs nearby, it, the healing is, well, it's working out pretty well. And let's double check what I mentioned before. It is 32. Okay, so about 16 energy for 32 health healed. But still, that's a lot of energy that's being used up every time. So reefs do get drained pretty quickly. Second Zion Trigger has been built from Monkuki. Jumping to his point of view, he is getting tip teleport. He does have the Zion Pulsar as well inside of the base and able to get rid of one of the Octopods as well with some damage, but not a whole lot. Zion Trigger as well taking some damage, but it is the more tanky unit. Definitely better equipped to handle, taking a lot of damage. Monkuki not paying attention to the Zion Pulsar, however, allowing it to get knocked, allowing it to get killed, and he does have the current energy to save it. He could jump back and save it, but he is choosing not to do so, surprisingly enough. Although, at this point, he cannot. It's a very close thing, and it's now past the edge, so he cannot save that at all. Unfortunately for him. However, Cybernetic Pony does have the Zion Turcher still in Monkuki's base. There's a Faro after it, which... I should point out, it actually has been buffed slightly. The... I think it was, it was the range got buffed, but still, that is saying something. Faro's... I'll have to double check that, actually. Pretty sure it's the range buff, if I recall correctly. Just read the patch notes just recently. <sighs> so much to remember. Anyway, we... Let's double check this for a second. But in the meantime, we do have... Well, jumping back at 6 through 2 mark, a second Zion Turcher is coming in, so that is dealing enough damage to get rid of... That first Faro, and without that Faro, the Zion Turcher has free reign, and from the north as well, the two scouting infantry get provoked. They won't be able to do much damage, but they are getting provoked, and Monkuki continuing to actually not continue to build up anything. In fact, Monkuki is floating. I'm not sure if he's going to go for Gate Tech or not, but he seems to be forgetting about his base. Given the lack of Chrono Energy, that's not surprising. I mean, he really can't actually... Neither player can really do much at this point, this far in the past. They lack the orders. As you can see, neither player can... Well, okay, Monkuki right now can issue one order. Yeah, basically neither player can issue orders right now, so no real surprises there, and 
it was, yeah, just attack range. That was the only thing that was changed for Faros. Everything else for Grecum, there was no other Grecum change, actually. No other balance changes to them. But still, a range increase is good for Faros. Because range is really the weak part of any, well, okay. It's good for Faro specifically because Faro's, as well as Shinveer actually, have range as their advantage, their distinguishing feature. That and their kind of generalist units, but range is a big part of it. And Annex getting Gatex, a monk who he was saving up for Gatex. Cybernetic Pony, on the other hand, what is he up to? 740 mark, he has, well, cleared out the, his base. He lost a couple Octopods in the process, but actually not all that much was lost. No RPs were lost. One was maybe damaged, but yeah, one was damaged, but... The downside, though, his his reefs are out of energy. If Monkuki goes for a second attack around the same time, or I guess he's going to chronoport back stuff, we'll see. He does have gate tech. He is getting a slipgate foundation. This foundation right here, this is our slipgate. Or soon will be. Once it gets built up. But Monkuki could do that right now if he wants to. Cybernetic Pony, on the other hand, he is jumping back to see the attack as it unfolds the unplayable past. He's probably going to get Gatek as well. Jumping to Monkuki's point of view, Cybernetic Pony at this point in time doesn't have a whole lot of money, which probably is just expenditure on air units. I don't see him having... Yeah, he does not have Gatek at this point in time, so it, I... Yeah, there's nothing to be said about that. He does not have Gatek. He is not saving up for Gatek. He is not has not researched Gatek. Well, we'd know too, because it would say partial. And when Monkuki hit his point of view, he was... Okay, Cybernetic Pony... His point of view is going to have to work here. So Monkuki at the 856 mark is building a slipgate halfway through. He's done about 930 mark. Monkuki is just... He was scouting out at the time. We just missed it. But he was scouting out when he was going to attack. Targeting the attack to figure out what he's supposed to hit. Cybernetic Pony, on the other hand. Not sure if he's aware that Gate Tech has been researched. But that was quite the dead giveaway. And Cybernetic Pony going for a counterattack. Trying to stop it before it starts. Will he succeed? Hard to say. Because Monkuki can, of course, just chronoport back at his leisure. And, in fact, he... Well, has just finished the slipgate at the 922 mark. The Zion Pulsars are... Well, one of them's done. The other two not quite done. But Actually, no, they are done. They're, in fact, te they're teleporting away a bit too soon. I think Monkuki might have made a mistake there. He probably wants to teleport those guys back. I don't think he wants to keep them going in. Now, that being said, the reefs are... Well, around this time, they are out of energy. 270 points point of view. 10 seconds later, they are about half energy. But yeah, Monkuki corrected the mistake, jumped these guys back... Surprisingly, didn't jump the Hierarchy Leader. That seems like an unfortunate mistake. Needs to jump the Hierarchy Leader back. And there we go. Jumping it back. Getting it healed up. And then we'll Chronoport everything back. He doesn't have much time, though. He's going to only be able to Chronoport back to around here. So right when the battle ends, he will be able to follow up with these four units. Assuming he heals these guys up. He's going to have to do that first. But, and there he goes. With the Foundation, healing them up. But we'll see the... A Pharopod coming in here to try to deal with these guys, and the Foundations are a good choice. They will detect the Pharopods, which are also cloaked. Teth Pulsar is able to counter them as well, but unfortunately, they are not in range of the Foundations. Finally getting into range of the Foundations, but after losing a couple of Zion Pulsars, Monkuki, I'm surprised he's not Depot Micro Ring. This is Monkuki's thing. He, he is the master at throwing units into the Depot to heal up. I'm just surprised I'm not seeing that. I'm seeing it a bit. Like, this Teth Pulsar was pushed back in, but none of the Zion Pulsars were saved, and... The chronoporting has not been used yet, and Cybernetic Pony really timed his attack perfectly as far as disrupting the chronoports. And now Cybernetic Pony saving up for chronoporting of his own, and there it goes! Starting chronoporting at the 1047 mark, so he is going to be very well prepared for dealing with this. And he's also double checking the northeast side of the map, very wise thing to do. Monkey could very well have expanded there, and didn't. I've seen, on Felsing Inferno I've noticed a lot of one base play. Cybernetic Pony has gotten this expansion, has gotten an Arcticus around this expansion here, but I haven't seen in the last few patches a lot of people playing Felsing Inferno multi-base. Admittedly, the bases are pretty far apart. You have this one natural, and then the next expansion is over in the north, the north we northeast. We do have Monkuki with one resource processor to the center north. And actually, one of the no, Simon Pulse are just checking the northwest as well, so both players checking their potential expansions. Neither one has actually expanded there yet, and Monkuki as well not yet prepared for dealing with this. Double checking, however, the southwest expansion, Separate Pony has taken it. Cybernetic Pony jumping back about a minute. We see at the 11.40 mark, chronoporting is done. He has some far pods and sepi pods. He's probably going to chronoport back, well, all of that, really. So it's finished. Sepi pods are going to be moving forward, and the faro pods have not been killed. They're just to the northeast. So 
once they come in, now let's double check their energy. They have 24, 25 energy each. They're gonna last for a couple more minutes cloaked like that. I, well, I could see that attack coming in and being pretty powerful. An attack, as you can see, the foundation right here by the RP. So an attack, the classic far applied uppercut attack, jumping back and trying to undermine your opponent's economy, that won't work out. This foundation is right there. Although auto defense has not been researched, there are no bastions, and the Teth pulsers are on the wrong side of the map. Well, wrong side of the base. However, the, the Farbod's coming in, and a Chronoport is incoming. This is actually Mongoogie, sorry. Mongoogie's Chronoport's incoming. Now, Cybernetic Pony is not yet there. He is, interesting, further in the future, has, I think he's gone for a Chronoport, though, and Mongoogie definitely going for a Chronoport. Double checking the Chronoport as well. Unfortunately, doesn't seem to have actually issued any teleport orders following the Chronoport. That's a bit of a problem. So these far pods right here, Cyber Pony does see them, and he is going for the classic uppercut, and the fact is, there's no unit to defend against this. The far pods can definitely be spotted, but they can't... Okay, there we go. Death Pulse are moving into place, but not lasting long enough, unfortunately, and now that the foundation gone, Cyber Pony chronoports them back and assists with the attack. This is going to be probably... Oh, we'll be decisive if it's worth the fact that we see the parent far pods move north, and that... kind of bad timing. Unfortunately, the child far pods not helping out with... The attack in the back, I was going to say Child Farpods, the future Farpods. The future Farpods coming back, and the pre chronoported Farpods go north, the post chronoported Farpods both die. So Cybernetic Pony unable to deal a whole lot of damage with those units in the past, although he did manage to kill off one of the Teth Pulsers, reducing it to a Teth Veer, and I don't know if Monkuki has time to actually... No, he doesn't! That entire chronoport chain is gone in the Unplayable Past, Monkuki has no chance of dealing with that. So that will actually have some repercussions. I don't know how much, though. I think the Farbods really had dealt the damage they're going to deal regardless. But we'll see. Monkuki is going for Chronoport of his own, and Chronoporting and Teleport Math Design bolstered to basically deal with the economy himself. But Cybernetic Pony does have the ability to Chronoport back, and he's going to likely see this. He hasn't actually bothered to deal with it, though. He does. He must see in the blue time that there's attack happening in the past. He's... Also got to see the orange bars here pointing out the RPs are being damaged, but he's not responding to it at the moment. He is apparently more focused on his attack in Monkuki's base, and Monkuki much more focused in the past, seeing how his attack is panning out, and it's closing up the Hue Plasma RPs. Definitely the target of choice, though we can't actually control the Zion Pulsar right now. But yeah, the QP RPs are the target of choice. Cyber 90 Pony can only Chronoport with Q Plasma, of course, which means he wants to get rid of that. Make sure Cyber 90 Pony has none of it, but he actually can't really do that. However, sending a Teth Pulsar back to help out getting rid of the Fire Pods, certainly a productive course of action, but at the same time, this is going to be a bit of a tricky section. Monkuki's base is not the most stable right now. So I think Cyber 20 jumping back, he does see the Zion Pulsar attack and probably going to try to Chronoport back to deal with this. Octopod's coming in from the northwest and likely to Chronoport as soon as Cyber Pony has the... Well, actually, he's not going to have the Chrono Energy for a while. So no, he just Chronoport back in Octoligo instead to get rid of this Zion Pulsar. Which, as you can see, is a perfect choice. Octoligo gets rid of it, no problem. In fact, the only real counter on Octoligo is just sheer numbers. That are cloaked units without detection. But yeah, Octoligo's definitely a very scary thing to have. Oh, yeah. Octoligos are very difficult for Vector to deal with. They are... They believe they can be dealt with. And there, the Octopods have been chronoported back to the 1302 mark. Cybernetic Pony is just pincering Monkuki's base. Monkuki has the slipgate, but not much you can do with it. Teth Searcher's up. Teth Shin Oh, Shin Turtle was a second away from being done. Right before the depot was destroyed. Mountain Cookie's gonna have to save that. Try to get rid of these Octopods, but he doesn't have any control over the section in the timeline. This is the unplayable pass. He can't do anything about this. Trying to just teleport away as many of these RPs as he can to the north. Unfortunately, not quite able to do so, and not really able to do much to Cybernetic Pony. And Cybernetic Pony, on the other hand, has moved to the northwest. He has Sepi Faro pair here. They are going to expand pretty shortly. But it doesn't matter. That is game. Cybernetic Pony wins. Monkey throws in the towel. So I hope you enjoyed that. And I'll have another game for you guys in just a moment. So stay tuned. It'll be Golda versus Catalyte on Tomb of Heroes, I believe. So yeah, stay tuned for that.